personally, I can't stand musical artists who get all snobby about stuff like that. Who go, oh yeah, you know, act shouldn't come from TV shows. Because like, at, at the end of the day, like they're not treading on my territory at all. Like I write my songs and I do my gigs and that's my thing. And they get songs written for them and tour around and that's their thing. But they're still living their dream and making a living. So why am I going to be the one to put them down? I can't like some some acts in my fields get a bit too snobby and you know. You hear that come up a lot lately, right? Oh, dude, like, come on, man! Like, there's 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 one guy that I know from from England called Ollie Murs that came that came second on on X Factor like four years ago and every time i bump into him at an award ceremony he is the nicest dude in the world and he's just like do you know what mate it could all end tomorrow and i'm just having a blast doing it so like uh, and like you can't you can't, you can't really complain with someone we met like Ali yeah. on, a, on a tour john jay and i did we thought he was awesome he's cool was and very like, cool and like he came he came off a reality show and before he was doing that he was working in a call center so like doesn't it sort of not matter how you make it where once you once you're there it's what you do with it right yeah once like to be honest it's a to be honest, there's lots of lots of people in the cool indie scene that get a buzz quickly, get signed, and then kind of put out. And just j just because they didn't go on a show doesn't make them more credible. Like they're still just as they still haven't worked as hard. Like the um, <laughs> when you when you get to a certain position, you have to work hard as as hard as everyone else. As soon as Ollie Murs came into the mainstream, he had to do everything that I did when I came into the mainstream. It, it, it just people take different routes. Some people have longevity from the routes that they take and some people just have that. And I think I think with 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 Ollie, his his attitude to it has been so positive that he's now had four platinum four double platinum albums in England and sold out tours and he's starting to come over here and stuff like that. So like and yeah. I the the thing that the thing that gets me when people go on reality shows is when they come off them and think the world expects them, uh, world owes them a favour. I think if you go onto a reality show, take it all with a pinch of salt, and if you want the career, just lay back, just say cool, let's do everything that you tell me to do, and, and that's that's the that's the gamble. Do you have to be careful with your fans that kind of look at you as an independent person now that you got songs on on top forty radio? Do you have to fight that at all too, no, or do they no, they get behind like, you a little differently? My thing, my thing is like, because um, I, you know, you're a bit t t towards the beginning when I was an independent act, and I didn't have a label, and I was doing everything myself. And as soon as it started getting very popular, you kind of get labeled a, a sellout and stuff. And I think, I think, the definition of a sellout is if you put a song on that you wrote. And you have to turn it off. I think if you put a song on that you wrote and you nod your head to it and go, "Yeah, this is cool," that you're 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 doing you're doing your job right. Uh, and my argument with my songs being on top forty is like the A team, which has suddenly been a hit. Thank you for spinning it, by the way. Mm -hmm. Suddenly been a hit here. That recording of it is the actual demo. That oh I, really? That yeah. The the recording that you hear on radio is the demo from the day after that I wrote that song and it was on an independent EP I released called Loose Change. I made the music video for about 20 quid. Like it's all come from this grassroots place and it's now hit the main heights. So anyone that does get annoyed hearing it on radio, it's still come from a pretty, pretty <laughs> dirt it's, it's down pretty place. Haunting. Yeah. That's cool that you stuck with that version of it because it's pretty incredible. It stands out. Well, yeah. And it also, also, also it was quite, quite good value just to use the same one. You know, you don't, you don't mm. have to go back into a big studio to record it. I've already, already done it and it cost me like a hundred quid. So yeah. hey, how, how do your, uh, are you close with your parents and what do they think? Very of all close with my parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean like every time, every time I'd go home, they'd, like just never mention it they'd just be like yeah cool yeah you're home cool let's have a family dinner and then i brought them out to the grammys and like yeah my, like my, my mom and dad cried and stuff like when oh. i played with elton and that that's yeah. that's when i was like oh actually yeah they are pretty they are pretty proud i think or or that maybe they're just upset that i didn't <laughs> wear a glittery suit or something but <laughs> yeah do they ever say oh my god look eddie's got four million twitter followers uh well my dad's a little freaked out that i'm followed by the population of sweden I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Not literally, not not. I don't, I'm not just followed by Swedish people. <laughs> no, <laughs> be a bit no, but they love you too. <laughs> Can you imagine that? <laughs> um, that would be weird. But yeah, uh, no, yeah. My parents are proud. My parents are proud. I, I, I introduced my dad to Paul McCartney um, last summer, and that was kind of a big moment for me. Being That's able awesome. to be like you that. You totally win the cool kid contest. Yeah. If you introduce your dad to no, Paul but McCartney. not, but not, but not even like <laughs> me and my dad walking up to him, being like, "Yeah, can we have a picture?" I'll yeah. just like, "Yeah, Paul, just dad, dad, Paul." Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have a brother, yeah. Older, younger? Older. Is he in the biz? No, no. But he's he's basically the best way to describe him uh would be just like 
he's hilarious, but like he's hilarious in the fact that he doesn't know where people's limits are. So like I brought him, <laughs> brought him to the Brits, which is like the uh, UK equivalent of the Grammys, and he's 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 just quite a kind of dry, sarcastic guy who just does not give a blank wh- who who you are. Like you could be you could be um, you know the most the most famous person on on the planet, and my brother will end up ripping into you. So anyway, that there's a. Uh, um, like his his way of describing me is he says Ed got the talents and I got the looks and if you knew my brother like he wears his clothes inside out and stuff like that he's a bit he's a bit uh, eccentric. Did but, he ever um, like bully you and beat you up when you were a kid and have fun? Like no, we didn't speak for about five years. But now we get on like he he lives in my flat in England. But anyway, we go we go to the Brits, which is like the UK equivalent of the Grammys, and um, there there's a guy called Plan B. I don't know if anyone's anyone's heard of Plan B, but Plan Plan B is a, a UK rapper slash soul singer who is culturally one of the most important people we have in in England. He's done like some amazing albums he just made a film called ill manners that commented on, on on all british kind of stuff and i'm chatting to him and i've been a massive fan of him for ages i'm, I'm on on a boat with him uh you know uh, this this after party ch- chatting to him and he's 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 a white rapper he's come from quite a rough rough area and uh you know he's you know we're having, having this chat and I'm like, oh, it's Plan B, this is cool. Uh, and my brother comes up and I go, oh, Plan B, this is my brother. And my brother's like, oh, who? And I was like, oh, Plan, plan B, remember I played you that song? He's like, oh, thought he was black. And then just and then just walked off. <laughs> and, and, and like, it, you know, you know stuff like that. That's respect level. Yeah, and, uh, uh, and, th- and there was a singer called Pixie Lot who uh, would be, would she'd be the equivalent of someone like, um, <sighs> Probably someone like Taylor Swift. She's like, she's like, but 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 she's more kind of uh, you know dancey and all of that sort of stuff. And she came down to my gig at Shepherd's Bush Empire, and my brother sat next to her and was like, "Your music, y- your music is really terrible, and it only sells because you're really pretty." But she loved him because of that. She like Im- invited him to his uh, her birthday party and stuff. Like he's oh, I like this he, guy. he yeah he's he, he's a good is it Murray? How how would you describe Matt? <laughs> yeah. Mental. Mental. Hey, I was in the. I was in the green room with Ed before he came out here. We were talking about stuff, and I was texting back and forth, and I wasn't paying attention. I said, "Sorry, my friend of mine, you know, Frankie Munez, actor Frankie Munez, was in Hawaii, and he was at the Pro Bowl, and he was getting some jerseys for my kids. And Frankie's like, when can you come get these jerseys?' And Ed was like, "Frankie Munez, Malcolm in the Middle.' He's like, "Oh my God!" And I said, "Yeah, I want to get him come. Oh yeah!" So Ed, here's Frankie. <laughs> Frankie's Dude, here. Dude, you thought you were nervous performing in front of Jay Z and Beyonce? <laughs> Check this out. Can I just say, like, I've I've uh, I've been having a um in in England we have a we have a channel called B- BBC Two and went b- and before cable I- existed BBC Two was the only program that showed good stuff and every day after school for five years it would be uh, Simpsons would be on at six o'clock um, Malcolm in the Middle would be on at six twenty Buffy the Vampire Slayer would be on at seven and um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air would be on at it's eight. A great and lineup. That, and and for the last for the last year. I watched all the Simpsons. I watched all the Fresh Prince. I just finished all the Buffy, and I've just started. Like literally, a couple of days ago, I just started. So, hello. Right and, yeah. And and uh, I was saying to Murray, like, mus- musicians never get geeked out by be- m- meeting other musicians. I met the most amazing people at at the Grammys, and it was kind of like, yeah, cool, nice to meet, nice to meet you. But I met um, one of the lads from Game of Thrones the other day, and he's just he's just a minor part, but it was one of the biggest moments of my life. I was just so like, <laughs> meeting me. I think I think it's the same actors for musicians and musicians for actors. But thank you for. Awesome. <laughs> I, s- I know we have a little bit of time left, and I see the capo on the second fret, which yeah. is, that means A team, right? Yeah, I actually, um, I actually forgot though, because I've been playing it on second fret for like the last four years, and then um, when I when I did the thing with with Elton at the Grammys, I played it. We started off playing it on second fret, and it turned out it was third. Oops. And I, I've been playing it out of tune all this time. So.